As we continue our discussion on eukaryotic gene regulation, we're going to move forward on this topic by looking at a different form of regulation besides the chromosome structure, and this next flowchart will be entitled Eukaryotic Gene Regulation 3. So we'll entitle it Eukaryotic, we'll just say GR for Gene Regulation, Roman numeral 3. And this entire flowchart, just like our previous flowchart, which was devoted to chromosome structure, this one's going to be devoted to regulation at a specific transcriptional event known as initiation. So we'll say regulation of transcription initiation, TXN initiation. So we're going to talk about many different regulatory steps in the initiation of transcription. We know that transcription involves three steps, initiation, elongation, and termination. There are going to be many different forms of regulation for this process to start. And that intuitively should make sense to you. If you want to regulate genes, you should probably regulate it early on. Early on would mean at the transcriptional level. And if you want to definitely go even deeper, it would mean that you would want to regulate it at the first step of transcription, which would be initiation. And that's exactly what we're going to be looking at. So we're going to start this flowchart by stating that this regulation involves proteins specifically. Okay, but more so than that, it involves proteins that bind to DNA. Proteins that bind to DNA. These are very specific proteins that are going to be binding and are either going to aid or they will inhibit. So two contrasting sort of options for these proteins are either aid or inhibit the binding of another very important enzyme that we've talked about, um, RNA polymerase. Now again, RNA polymerase in this flowchart will be just RNAP. We have to understand initiation. Initiation is all about getting transcription started. Transcription was what? Transcription was going from DNA and turning that into an mRNA usually in eukaryotes. And this is all through transcription. Transcription has those one, two, three steps. We're focusing on step one, which was initiation. And it makes sense that initiation is going to involve proteins that are either going to aid, that means, you know, increase transcription or inhibit transcription through their binding on RNA polymerase specifically. We'll get into those details as we move forward. Now, another important sort of side note that we have to establish is that transcription is going to require something or two things. Transcription is going to require uh, one out of these two things or maybe even a combination of both. For the most part, these two requirements are essential in making sure transcription occurs correctly. And that's where we're going to be focusing on our regulation and our sort of yes or no, on or off switches involved in transcription. The main idea here is that there's going to be a starting site that's going to be important in transcription and there's also going to be a region that we're already quite familiar with known as the promoter. Now remember, this is not a promoter in terms of the LAC operon or an operon structure because we are looking at eukaryotes. Eukaryotes do not have operons, but they do have promoters. We're going to see a bit of a similarity, and I'll show you the difference as well. The starting site is considered the place at which the base pairs where transcription really, really starts. So you have to imagine that transcription doesn't just start on wherever it, the RNA polymerase lands. There's actually a point at which the RNA polymerase sort of goes down wherever it lands, that promoter is where it lands, and finds the base pair that specifically says, hey, this means we have to start transcription. That's our starting site. The promoter is a little bit different in the sense that the promoter region is specifically a sequence of bases, usually bases that we actually know of, that we can predict with great accuracy. It's a sequence of bases where RNA polymerase binds. RNAP binds. So this is a specific sequence of bases that are going to usually show up at which RNA polymerase will first bind to. And it will go down this promoter region until it finds the starting site. And once it finds the starting site, it will start transcription, as we stated. But what is this promoter region involved in, in terms of regulation? Key idea here is that our promoter region, 
as compared to our, let's say, prokaryotic ancestors, is that this promoter region is much more complex, as you've seen. It's a big theme of us as eukaryotes than the prokaryotic form, let's say, than pro form. So prokaryotic form. In addition, this promoter actually involves the usage of other proteins, involves other proteins to help RNA polymerase. We're going to talk about those. Other, let's say, proteins over here. Uh, other involves other proteins uh, to, uh, let's erase that, to help RNA polymerase. There we go. So we're going to talk about those proteins that will come in and help RNA polymerase. They're going to come in at the promoter region, and they're going to help out RNA polymerase with this transcription idea. Basic example of this is known as a, a sequence known as the TATA -ta box, T-A-T-A -A box, a very clear, concise, predictable sequence of about 25 to 35 base pairs that are just T-A, T-A, T-A all over and over again. They're actually upstream from the starting site. So again, upstream from, let's say, SS for starting site. What is the point of this TATA box? This TATA box represents a promoter region in which the RNA polymerase says, oh, this looks like a good place to t attach onto because there's this sequence here, and I'm going to utilize this sequence because other proteins will possibly be here for me to very easily attach onto the promoter and thus begin transcription at the starting site. Now, in order for this to all happen, you have to create something known as a transcription initiation complex. This is sort of the idea of everything that we just talked about in one phrase. Transcription initiation complex will involve two things being there. There are going to be transcription factors that are going to be critical in making sure transcription happens or doesn't happen. And also there's going to be the utilization of RNA polymerase, specifically RNA polymerase 2. There's a specific class of RNA polymerase that's necessary here. But the key idea is that when we have both of these things bound to the promoter, so we'll say bound to promoter region, of this transcription uh, gene regulation story, then we're going to have initiation happen. And there are going to be many key things that these transcription factors can do to either help or, let's say, aid or inhibit the binding of RNA polymerase. They are very uh, closely related to each other, these two concepts. So what are these transcription factors? We'll do them right over here. So these transcription factors, we have to understand that they are complex proteins that are considered regulatory transcription proteins. So that's a key word here, regulatory TXN proteins. What does it mean to be regulatory? Regulation or regulatory genes or proteins are there because they're going to, of course, regulate. But what does that mean? That means that they're going to either tell things to turn on or turn off. They're going to tell things to go or not go. They're going to either aid or inhibit. These are ideas we've established. This is the basis of genetic regulation that we're going to be focusing on. More specifically, transcription factors, for the most part, are there to aid RNA polymerase. They are regulatory transcription proteins necessary in order to aid RNA polymerase. There are two basic classes. One of the classes is known as general transcription factors, so we'll call them general TFs. These are going to be essential, meaning that they are going to be actually seen every single time we need a protein made. So they are absolutely always there. Essential for the transcription of all proteins. All proteins, in order for any protein to be made, you need certain general transcription factors on the promoter region combined with RNA polymerase, making this transcription initiation complex in order to have genetic expression, gene expression. This is always seen. This is basically a standard in transcription factor language. What is not standard? Well, there are some transcription factors known as specific TFs. Specific transcription factors are actually going to be a little bit different than general because they are actually going to be interacting with things called control elements. So these interact with control elements. I'll define that in just a second. But keep in mind right now we have a difference between specific and general. General are essential for all proteins to be made. They're always found in every single protein uh, transcription that's going to happen. 
specific transcription factors are going to interact with these control elements and thus this is actually going to cause them to regulate certain genes and thus regulate certain proteins. So they're going to regulate certain genes. Not all, like we saw before, but this time some of them. This is the whole idea behind regulation and genetic control, figuring out if we want to aid or inhibit, um, turn on or turn off certain genes. We'll conclude this video by talking about these control elements. They're a very critical part of understanding this transcription initiation uh, regulation that we're talking about. So the control elements are basically non-coding pieces of DNA. They're pieces of DNA that are not going to be involved in any sort of transcription. Okay? Think about it like this. Transcription is going to require a starting site and a promoter region. The promoter region, let's imagine, involves places that are not going to be transcribed. Think of these non-coding DNAs. Makes sense that the control elements might play a big role and do play a big role in being a part of this promoter region. We'll get to that. Moving forward, control elements provide a binding site, so I'll just write that as BS, for TF. Binding site for transcription factors. A big control element that you might have already been able to elude and sort of figure out is the Tata box. It's a great example of a control element. Again, it's non-coding DNA. It's a bunch of TA, TA over and over again. It's found within the promoter region. So it's found within promoter, just like we stated here. And it's actually going to serve as a binding site for general transcription factors. Remember, gen general TFs are going to be found in all proteins. They're going to be found in the transcription of all proteins. This shows you that the Tata box is found and necessary in the transcription of every single protein because it is a crucial control element. Think about it, control. We're trying to turn on and turn off things. We're trying to control expression, and thus the Tata box is a necessary piece to control expression. Now, we're going to complete our discussion by talking about two different types of control elements, two classes, let's say, known as proximal, we'll say CEs for control elements, versus uh, the opposite of proximal, which would be distal control elements. So distal means far away, proximal means close. What is this in relation to? This is actually in relation to the promoter. The promoter plays a critical, critical role in this transcription initiation process. It's a key idea here. And there are proximal control elements that are close to the promoter. And thus, if they are close to the promoter, they're going to be part of this promoter region. But what about these distal ones? What effect could something so far away from the promoter possibly have? This is very interesting. If we have things that are far away from the promoter, how could it possibly influence the promoter region? Well, there are two subclasses of distal control elements known as enhancers. This language should become very familiar with you now. Enhancers and also what it would be the opposite, silencers. So there are some things that are going to enhance from a far away control element. These are going to be transcription factors that bind here. Because remember, look, this is a binding site for transcription factors. So I have a distal control element. I'm going to bind some transcription factors to the enhancer distal control element. What is this going to do? Of course, it's going to increase transcription, really promote transcription because this is an enhancer. What if we have the same situation? What if I bind some transcription factors here to the silencer region? If you bind these proteins here, these proteins will tell the silencer regions to decrease transcription. It's a very complex yet very intimate process that these proximal and distal control elements uh, control, for lack of a better phrase, and we have these huge, huge, complex sort of ways to control gene regulation as stated here. We'll conclude our eukaryotic gene regulation story in the next video. It's just really, really nice to appreciate these complex details devoted to us as eukaryotes versus our prokaryotic ancestors.